Coming up on News Channel 12, live at 6, WKU's parking problems seem to be overflowing. Tonight, we'll take a look at the parking and it seems like just about everyone does everything online. Tonight, the story of a local woman who says her online search for love went all wrong. Till we see more snow in your future, your complete forecast is straight ahead. You're watching News Channel 12, live at 6. Live from the campus of Western Kentucky University, where the spirit makes the master. This is News Channel 12, live at 6. Good evening and welcome to News Channel 12, live at 6. I'm Ashley Askren. And I'm Jason Hibbs. Thanks for joining us. It's something that frustrates many WKU students, faculty, and staff. And today, folks from all over campus had the opportunity to voice their concerns. WKU Parking and Transportation held an open forum today in the Mass Media Hall. The main focus of the meeting was to present three new options that may solve the problems with parking on and around campus. Options consist of maintaining the current system, a designated lot system on campus, and a new hybrid system. Head of Parking and Transportation Jennifer Tugas says the reason for the parking problems is as simple as the students' expectations. You know, people feel that when they buy the permit, then that means they have a parking space where they want it. And, and that's, the, that's the conception, that's the assumption that they arrive with when, they're, when they buy a parking permit. And that's not the reality that we offer right now. We'll have a full interview with the director of WKU's Parking and Transportation tomorrow at 6. The city of Bowling Green says lots of people owe lots of money in unpaid parking tickets. That's right, Jason. City officials say the current system in place for collecting that money is simply not working. News Channel 12's Amina Harovich takes us downtown for more on the story. Right now I'm parked out front because um, it's Friday and they don't chalk on Fridays. Working in the downtown Bowling Green Square, Sarah Fort says she parks out front of her store that limits her to two hours of parking because she says there really isn't much of a choice. I'm unaware of other places to park. I know I could park down on State Street, um, like closer to State Street Pub, but then I'd have to walk down there at night by myself. I would say most of the time people uh, park illegally uh, for convenience. You know, uh, I'm late, I'm in a hurry, I can't find a parking spot. So it's easy to park on a yellow line or I'm just going to run into the grocery for just a minute. According to Kim Lancaster of the city manager's office, maybe that's why the city of Bowling Green currently has over $77,000 in unpaid tickets over the past five years. She says the problem is the city hasn't had a strict enough policy in the past. It's looking for a way to make people pay these fines. Um, one of the things that we've already done is we have sent bills to 47 offenders. Actually, we've sent them to repeat offenders. And what that is is people with five or more tickets. We've sent them the bills requesting payment on their tickets. And so that's one thing that we've done to kind of start the ball rolling. And Lancaster also says city officials are working together to come up with a cost-effective solution to recover those fines. She says the city expects a solution in the near future. Reporting for News Channel 12, I'm Amina Harovich. Lancaster also says solutions that city officials are working on include developing a better system to collect funds. They also want stricter policies against offenders. They have yet to know what that system or policies will be. Western Kentucky University Police Department will host a crime prevention presentation next Tuesday. The presentation will focus on providing tips to faculty and staff on how to deter crime and stay safe on and off campus. WKU Police Crime Prevention Coordinator Mandy Johnson says there are ways to be proactive about ensuring your safety. Just keep an eye on your stuff and don't leave it sitting around unattended. Uh, that'll prevent one of the biggest crimes we have on campus. Other than that, just uh, at night, walk in pairs, walk with a buddy, you know, stay alert. If you're walking by yourself, don't be on your cell phone and distracted. Several WKU students told us how safe they feel here on campus. Uh, I guess it's kind of scary, you know, that, that kind of thing keeps happening, and it seems to happen just about anywhere. But, I mean, I don't, I personally don't feel less safe. I pretty much feel as safe as I would anywhere else. I mean, anything can happen, but I feel safe enough here. I mean, nothing, it's not like a thing that I worry about a lot. Basically on general crime prevention around campus. Tuesday at 9 a.m. We've all seen the commercials, and some of us have probably even thought about signing up. I'm talking about online dating sites like Match.com and eHarmony. 
Now, those sites may seem harmless enough, but one local lady says her online search for love ended up costing much more than she ever imagined. A few keystrokes and a couple of mouse clicks, and this lady's online search for affection ended in financial frustration. I just happened to go online to check my bank account. She's asked not to be identified, but says she feels victimized, not by someone she met on the site, but by the online dating site itself. She claims she only signed up for a one-time deal with Match.com, but just a few months later, noticed roughly $100 was missing from her bank account. She called Match.com. He started asking me if I had not been happy with the service, and I told him that there was absolutely nothing wrong with the service. I just did not want to renew it, and I certainly did not like them renewing it without my permission. Worried that she wouldn't get her money back, she called her bank and was told that this sort of thing happens more often than one would think. The regional president of U.S. Bank, Craig Browning, says a lot of people get into trouble online because they may not know exactly what they're signing up for. They're authorizing payment. And when they do that, they need to make sure that they've read all the fine print, that they completely understand what the implications are, because once you put that information out there, it's gone. Browning says many businesses simply cannot be trusted, so it's important to thoroughly research every company you do business with. Match.com is a reputable site. We checked with the Better Business Bureau, and they have a rating of A+. That's the best rating that any business can get. We called the Kentucky Attorney General's office, and they didn't have anything bad to say about the company. We have received one complaint from a consumer regarding Match.com in the last five years, but we do not currently have an investigation or any open inquiry involving them. We tried to reach Match.com about the matter. They said they'd call us back within a few days, but never called. Match.com. We tried again and were put on hold for over 20 minutes. So on a whim, we borrowed a student's cell phone. They picked right up. Yes, my name is Jason Hibbs. I'm a reporter in Bowling Green, Kentucky. But when we told them who we were, we were put on hold again and told to call another number, and they didn't answer. After all this, our online single admits she probably didn't read as carefully as she should have, but says she'll never again look for love online. In the end, Match.com did refund the money, and Craig Browning from U.S. Bank says the big lesson to be learned here Anytime you do any online transaction when you're entering credit or debit card numbers into the computer, make sure you read and reread all the fine print so you know exactly what you're signing up for. Will Doolin now joins us with a first look at our forecast. Well, Ashley, as you can see, uh, we've had the we've dealt with the snow, the rain, and the bitter cold temperatures for most of the winter. However, there is a small change coming up that will make a big impression and could affect your weekend weather. Right now, currently across the area, we are holding steady in the mid-30s, 35 in Bowling Green, 35 in Greenville, 36 down in Fort Campbell, then off to our wet east, right behind me, 29 in Campbellsville, the cold spot. Six-hour radar shows there is no precipitation, no rain, no snow in the area. We haven't seen this for a very long time. And it's going to continue at least through Saturday. Through your evening, 31 at 7 o'clock, clear, clear to partly cloudy skies. Late evening shows 27 around midnight, and then for your overnight low of 23. Clear partly cloudy skies throughout the evening. What can we expect for the next few days? I'll have your complete five-day forecast coming up straight ahead. Thanks, Will. Coming up next on News Channel 12, Live at 6, it's been one year since the stimulus plan was signed. We'll take a look at what's changed. And we'll see what WKU's renewal plan has lined up for the future. You, uh, my cell phone number and John's cell phone number. Hey, pretty. And um, number the restaurant where we're going to be. And oh, I've um, left you my pager number too, just in case, because you never know. Um, John, you have the gift. The odds of a babysitter calling 911: one in 1,400. So happen, please don't hesitate. The odds of a child being diagnosed with autism. One in 150. You know the odds of autism. Now learn the signs. Go to AutismSpeaks.org. Good nutrition can lead to great things. 
Sessions. Find out how a healthy lifestyle can help your child succeed. You're watching News Channel 12 live at 6. Your source for late breaking news affecting you. Storm Center 12 forecast. The latest sports scores and highlights from your team. And consistently voted best newscast. News Channel 12, your source for news. The state of Kentucky is receiving a grant to improve the way local hospitals share patient information. The $10 million grant will go toward creating a statewide health information network known as Health Information Exchange. According to officials, the new network will allow hospitals, physicians, and pharmacies to share information regarding patients across the state. Officials say the switch will reduce costs and increase the accessibility of medical records. Here on the Hill, Western Kentucky University dedicated Snell Hall in a ceremony Monday afternoon. The new five-story addition to Ogden College houses lecture rooms, research labs, and classrooms. Snell Hall is one step of a seven-part renewal of the College of Science and Engineering. Representative Jen DeCesare, Senator Mike Reynolds, and Representative Jody Richards, who was the Speaker of the House when the project began, were all in attendance. Four other projects are planned for Ogden College, including renovation of the Thompson Complex and Hardin Planetarium, along with the new addition of a new WKU uh, Department of Agricultural Research Lab. Authorities arrest nine breaking up a major drug trafficking ring in South Central Kentucky after an 18-month investigation. Police execute six search warrants. Police suspect the proceeds of drug deals went towards the 13 vehicles two motorcycles and multiple big screen TVs found at the homes. Authorities also seized more than $190,000 and multiple weapons. Police claim the drug operation trafficked roughly 500 pounds of marijuana each month and grossed over $1 million a year. A former Western Kentucky student is sentenced to 24 years and three months in jail by a federal court. Officials say 40-year-old Keith Hartman was sentenced in Louisville Tuesday on federal accounts of receipt, distribution, and possession of child pornography. He pled guilty to downloading child porn images to his computer while being a student and living on campus at WKU during the summer of 2007. Hartman used university internet access to share the images with others. He previously pled guilty to sodomy, rape, and other charges in state court. Hartman was also sentenced to a lifetime of probation. Today marks one year since President Obama's economic stimulus plan was put into effect. So has it done what the president has promised? Sandra Endo takes a look in this report from Washington. Signed into law one year ago, what has the $862 billion Recovery Act done to help communities across the country? One year later, it is largely thanks to the Recovery Act that a second depression is no longer a possibility. The president says the infusion of cash has created or saved millions of jobs this past year, with a large investment in infrastructure projects, tax breaks, and unemployment benefits. To mark this anniversary, top administration officials fanned out across the country to talk up its successes. The Department of Transportation has so far funded over 12,500 transportation construction projects nationwide, making a serious down payment on the need to rebuild. But Republican oh, critics say the stimulus plan hasn't gone far process. enough. The GOP yeah, released the this ad to process. counter the administration's claim. His $862 billion stimulus plan has failed to deliver. But the president admits there is more work to be done. Millions of Americans are still without jobs. Millions more are struggling to make ends meet. So it doesn't yet feel like much of a recovery. Some cash-strapped states, regardless of party platforms, are grateful for the financial aid. This money has really been very, very helpful to a lot of struggling Californians. The bulk of the stimulus money has not yet been spent, and the administration says come spring and summer, more Recovery Act projects will break ground. In Washington, I'm Sandra Endo. Coming up next in weather, Will Doolin will have your complete forecast. And later in sports, Zach Ryle will let us know if local power Warren Central continued their winning ways. I am folding the pants. The pants are long. <laughs> Do they go on my head? Do they? Do the pants go on my head? No. Do they go on Everyday my moments head? can become teachable.
teaching moments because learning starts long before school does. Give your child the start they need at bornlearning.org. Where have you been? I lost my cat. Oh, that's not right. Yeah, so I made this cat magnet to try and get him back. Cool. Does it work? Kinda. <laughs> nice. Yeah, but that's not my cat. I gotta keep working on it. See ya. See ya. Anything's possible. Keep thinking. Get started on your own inventions or just play some games at inventnow.org. Tech. I feel scared. Sometimes my parents have to take me to the hospital. I feel like a fish with no water. You know how to react to their asthma attacks. Here's how to prevent them. Call 1-866-NO-ATTACKS. Visit www.noattacks.org or call your doctor. Because even one attack is one too many. And as you can see, it was a very cloudy and cold day on the top of the hill. The shot of Cherry Hall students walking by felt that very cold weather today as you were heading out and about campus. And it's going to kind of continue to stay that way at least tonight, maybe into tomorrow. Right now, 35 degrees, dew point at 21, wind chill about 28. Feels a little bit colder than 35. Winds west at 9, and your humidity is at 56%. Uh, today's Almanac, 36, 23, where you're highs and lows today. Normals are at 49 and 29, so we were slightly below where we should be. Records will stand at 79 and negative 9 all the way back in 1958. No rain or snow to speak of today. We are over an inch and a half of precip for the day. Wind chills across the state. As you can see, this is as cold as it actually feels. 20 in Lexington, 23 in Owensboro, 20 Three in Cincinnati and then 28 here, right here in Bowling Green. Currently across the region, you can see the cold airs to the north, the warm airs to the south, if you call this warm. 30 in Louisville, 28 in Indianapolis, 27 over in Pittsburgh. Down to our south, 38 in Atlanta, the warm weather, 44 in Tuscaloosa. As radar and satellite shows, we have the snow, that the storm system that brought the snow is actually pushing off to the east. As we take a look at the bigger picture, we have another storm system off to our west. This is going to move in for the weekend, actually. Taking a look at your 36-hour forecast, as you can see, clear skies mainly for the next 36 hours. High pressures moving down to south will dissipate. And as we head into the rest of the time, cool conditions, a little bit milder. That's a small change we're actually going to have coming up in a couple of days. Actually, for tonight, your forecast calls for 27 degrees for your low, partly cloudy, very cold. Bundle up as you head out. For tomorrow, slightly warmer, 38, partly sunny skies. Then for your five-day outlook, as you can see, temps will rebound slightly. 43 on Friday, sunny skies, but another storm system moves in for the weekend, unfortunately. Guys? Thanks, Will. Zach Ryle now joins us with the preview of sports. Zach, were the tops able to come away with a win this weekend? Well, we'll see, Ashley. Hopefully they were able to do it. And we'll also check out what the noise was down at Preston Center on Saturday. All this will be coming up next. Every year, one million families face losing their homes to foreclosure. If you're ignoring your mortgage issues, things will only get worse. Call 1-888-995-HOPE, because nothing is worse than doing nothing.
too early to start reading to your kids. There are amazing possibilities when you open a child's mind to reading. Explore new worlds. Read. Scores and highlights from your team. News Channel 12, Sports. The Tops were able to win last Thursday against Arkansas State at home. The real question is, would they be able to pull out a win in Little Rock, Arkansas against the Trojans? We head to the video now as Coach Kim McDonald's team looking very confident early on. We move straight to the first half where Caden Dickerson we found in the corner 4-3. He'll make it. He'll actually get fouled on the play, go old-fashioned old four-point play. Tops will be up 9-7 early. And they started running away as Sergio Caruso right here shows a little bit of range. Tops ahead 20-7. Stefan Pettigrew will get into the act as he'll make a little bit of a drive. The bucket and the foul is good. 37-17 at the half. Tops are ahead. We'll move to the second half where the Tops just kept pouring it on. They really didn't trail at all this game. A.J. Slaughter at the alley-oop to Jeremy Evans. Nice little dunk there. Can that be, play be one up? I think so. Anthony Sally finds Sergio Carouche. He had nine on the game, but Slaughter was the one who led this team in scoring today as it was two points here, two of his 20. Hilltoppers get the road win 67-46. to They return to Diddle this Thursday to host South Alabama. Basketball was out of town, but balls were still flying on campus. Toppers played host to a philanthropic event Saturday, and the sports crew had it covered. The Preston Center was busy on Saturday as the inaugural St. Jude Dodgeball Tournament drew in large crowds. Five universities were in attendance, and as sophomore Josh Wiseman explains, it all goes to a good cause. The dodgeball team actually paired up with some members of Phi Gamma Delta. We've got guys out selling t-shirts. Um, we're taking donations. Admission was free. Um, one of the slogans I actually came up with was, uh, Admission is free, donations are welcome, headshots are guaranteed. Some people view dodgeball as an elementary school game. However, not only are these players athletic and skilled, they also have a passion for the game. Assistant Captain Felix Peroni talks more about why dodgeball and St. Jude came together. Well, I just found something I was passionate about. I love dodgeball. I play it all the time. It's just so much fun, and I feel like using my talents to help somebody else is the greatest thing. After the tournament finished, most players considered it a success as over $1,000 was raised to help fight cancer. The dodgeball team still has several matches left this year, but last Saturday was the last home match. Players are now preparing for naturals, nationals, which should be held sometime in mid-April. We moved to high school basketball as last night Warren Central hosted Allen County Scottsville. Heading to the game, Dragons enter this game riding an eight-game winning streak. Early in the first half, Jake, uh, the Dragons' Jacob King will be found in the corner 4-3. He makes it. That'll put the Dragons ahead 8-4. Moments later, George Fant, the key player for the Dragons all year, will pick up his own miss, get the rebound, put it up and in for two. Dragons are ahead 14-10, but the Patriots would rebound as Caleb Carver will be found for a deep three. He had 17 points on the game. Later on in the first half, Casey Napier gets the pull-up jumper to fall. Pats would go ahead 19-17. And then later, Napier finds the range. He hits three points. That would tie up the score 30-30 to at half. Second half was all the Dragons, though they took over. Shamarcus Wells cleans up the miss here uh, that Brett Jackson put up. Dragons are up 43-36. to And then Fant would finish this game off with a nice jam here. This is a college basketball play up and under. Uh, the Warren Central would roll 86-61. to Tonight, the Lady Toppers will host their final game at home. Four seniors will take the court for the final time against the Jaguars of South Alabama as it is senior night. Seniors Arnika Brown, Kenzie Rich, Dominique Duck, and Jessica Magley are all expected to be in the starting lineup tonight. The Lady Tops are looking to rebound from a loss at Arkansas Little Rock that saw their five-game winning streak snap. Not only is tonight senior night, but it is also breast cancer awareness night. All the Lady Tops will don their pink jerseys for the first 500 uh, fans that arrive at the, at the game. A pink t-shirt will be handed off. The tip-off will be at 640. The cold weather that's gripped much of the United States couldn't stop those who had the need for speed. A group of motorcyclists near Milwaukee gathered at Lake not to fish or to even have a relaxing day, but to race using special tires. The riders raced their bikes on a huge oval uh, track on the frozen lake. Tim Van Vuren shows us how this all works. All right. 
Audi. Obviously, a few problems there uh, with that. Sorry about that. There's technical stuff for you. Part right? of it. Go ahead and do it. So, but we're definitely looking forward to senior night tonight. Uh, we're definitely going to have uh, four great girls that are going to pretty much hang up their shoes here. Last time, they're probably going to play at Diddle. Uh, Arnika Brown, Kenzie Rich, both have been very key while they've been here as late tops. So we're looking forward to that. Thank you so much. Really Bro. appreciate it. And coming up, we'll take you all the way to Italy. Stay with us. Italy is home to some of the world's most chaotic drivers, and on the island of Capri, driving requires extra skill that tourists, well, they just don't seem to have. Capri is a small island west of Naples, Italy that attracts thousands of tourists daily. Once on the island, you can explore hundreds of historical and entertaining venues, but navigating to those places should be left to the local drivers. Narrow roads and winding streets make travel dangerous for the inexperienced. Because of this, Everything about the crazy are the only people allowed to drive cars on the island. It takes practice, but these drivers are some of the most skilled in the world. You know, we, learn, we learn how to drive with, on practice. After many, many years, you know, with a little bumping and stuff like that, we learn. But we don't have any special uh, driving uh, test on the island. Tourists can choose to explore the island by taxi, funicular, or the most common, the autobus. You can also rent scooters, but these cause a headache for experienced Caprese drivers. Actually, the Americans I saw were uh, falling down with the uh, mopeds. They have no practice of, of, for the driving on this island. But don't let the restrictions on driving steer you away from this beautiful island. If you feel adventurous, you can rent a scooter, but the best way to get around Capri is to leave it to the locals. Reporting from Capri, Italy, I'm Lee Cox. So no matter where you go on vacation, be sure to check out, check out the driving laws before you leave, guys. And if they're anything like Capri, watch out and be prepared <laughs> to find other forms if you can't rent your own vehicle. Alrighty. Will joins us now for a final look at that forecast. I am sick of snow. <laughs> Well, you're actually going to get a little bit of a break for a couple days. Uh, we are looking at temperatures rebounding into the low 40s. So we are going to have some sun for a couple days. And then, unfortunately, another winter weather system is coming in for Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. We're looking at rain during the day, snow in the evening. Temperatures won't dip down to the 20s like they have been for highs. We're going to stay in the 40s, about normal where we should be. So we're going to see all rain mostly, a little bit some flurries here or there throughout the day. And then temperature lows will stay around in the upper 20s. Buddy, thank you so much. And Zach, you were mentioning a little earlier, senior night, we're losing four girls. How is that going to affect the future of the program? Uh, you know, it, you would think that would normally, you know, losing four big players like that, that would normally really affect the program. Mm -hmm. But they've done a really, Coach Mary Taylor Cowles has done a great job at recruiting. She's brought in uh, three or four really good sophomore girls, and a lot of good freshman girls are coming in next year. You're going to see this team, and they're really not going to drop off at all. They're going to continue moving on. I hate to hear about the weather, though, because the baseball tops actually uh, start this weekend. Looks like that snow's going to play well, and snow and baseball just really don't go together that well. So. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, Can't help not, it. Nothing you can do with weather. I know. So. All righty. <laughs> Thanks so much, guys. That's all the time we have for tonight. Thanks for making News Channel 12 your source for news.
WKYU-PBS Channel 24 Bowling Green is the public television service of Western Kentucky University, serving South Central Kentucky with educational, informational, cultural, and locally produced programs featuring people, places, events, and issues of special interest to this region. Our digital transmitter, WKYU-DT, operates at a power of 61,000 watts from a site approximately six miles north of Bowling Green. Studios and offices are located on WKU's campus. Comments and inquiries should be directed to WKYU-PBS, 1906 College Heights Boulevard, number 11034, Bowling Green, Kentucky, 42101034. You can also reach us by phone at 1-800-599-2424 or on the web at wkyupbs.org. Local public television that's viewer supported. WKYU PBS. A new room with an observation deck providing panoramic views. President Obama assured the crew that NASA has his unwavering commitment